Thanks, Greg. Ciao. All right. Well, why don't we check in on some running issues in national affairs with our political panel and joining us today, uh, Labor Senator from South Australia, Marielle Smith, and Deputy Nationals Leader Perrin Davey joins us now. Perrin, uh, why don't we start with you? I imagine it's a bit drier where you are than around the greater Sydney area. Uh, we've been there, haven't we, far too often this year alone. What, what's your assessment of of the response, or if you like, the coordination uh, that's playing out between all levels of government this time around? Oh, look, firstly, you know, my heart goes out to these people in Western Sydney. As uh, the Minister was just saying, this is the third time for many of the people in Sydney. But even more worryingly, some areas, the ground is so saturated around there that some areas are looking to be inundated when they haven't been before. So um, it, it is a critical time. But one thing I will say, I'm very pleased um, that the, the Commonwealth disaster plan has been put into action early this time, as it was in March with the Northern Rivers and the Queensland floods. The same systems are being followed, the same processes are in place. No one's doing anything any faster or any slower. It's all the same processes. Uh, these were put in place under the co coalition government and I'm glad they're still working under the new Labor government. I want to thank uh, Minister Watt. I'm the Shadow Emergency Management Minister and he reached out to me over the weekend uh, to make sure that I could be included in briefings and I think that just shows that particularly when you are in the crucial stages of an emergency, it's not political. Yeah. It's got to be bipartisan and we've all got to stand shoulder to shoulder to provide support and help when needed. No, I, I hear that, which invites a question from you, Mariel, I suppose. The, the point, without getting political, the point that Perrin seems to be making is that uh, there is less noise and chatter, less politicisation, if you like, around uh, this inundation than there was back in February or, or early March. Why, why is that? Oh, look, Greg, I agree with Perrin in that I don't think it's right to be politicising this when we're in the heat of responding to a disaster. Um, the state government and the federal governments are working really cooperatively. I think we saw from Senator Watt, who has a deep passion for making sure that he's on the ground there immediately, that he's providing that support. And as Perrin said, working closely with the opposition to make sure that the response is being managed in an appropriate way and in partnership with all levels of government is really important. So I, I welcome that cooperation. I think I, I, it's great that the New South Wales government and the federal government are working hand in hand. Yeah, I think it was being observed, uh, Mariel, back to you, that uh, earlier in the year it was the Labor opposition not just holding the government to account but actually the Prime Minister in Scott Morrison very much personally to account for, for getting in there, for responding to the need is it, it more helpful, from, from where you sit now, is it more helpful to have a, an opposition playing it as, as Perrin and the current opposition is? Look, Greg, your, your question invites me to get political in a way which I don't think is really helpful sure. um, in the current environment in the heat of the response. I do say there were some concerns from um, us in opposition, particularly around the, the level of support, how that was getting out on the ground, um, and also the engagement from various levels of government. But as Perrin has said and as Senator Watt has said, you know, we're in the heat of this emergency. My heart goes out to the people in New South Wales who are in the middle of this right now. And I think what they want to see from me and from Perrin and from Senator Watt is coordination, working together and supporting all levels of government to, to do the right thing and get help to people where they need it. Yeah, and I think as we might hear from the Insurance Council a little later, the order of magnitude, at least on the dollars, if you count those, was was a few degrees higher there in uh, in February, March than, than perhaps it is. It's a bit more localised around um, uh, greater cities at the moment. Uh, Perrin, back to you. We've seen the Prime Minister's visit to uh, Ukraine armed with, roughly speaking, $100 million worth of extra assistance. Um, this is very much in keeping with, with other ventures by world leaders to sustain the Ukrainian war effort. Do you think this will be the end of it or more Perrin Davy required? Oh, don't we all wish that this war would end? Um, that's 
That's entirely out of our control, out of, out of Australia's control, out of the Prime Minister's control. What I will say is that Australia's support for Ukraine during this war um, commenced under the coalition government with bipartisan support, and that bipartisan support is ongoing under the new government. Um, I think that uh, we need to stand the course and provide Ukraine with what levels of support we can afford um, without compromising our own uh, economic stability and security and our own military security as well. So um, it, it's ongoing. Yeah, and is all this sustainable in your view, Mario Smith? It's not coming at any expense to Australia's defence. We're talking what double-digit numbers of Bushmasters when I think uh, thousands or a thousand might have been made over the years. Uh, are we able to uh, maintain this and or continue it? Yeah, look, Greg, I think the Australian people at the moment expect us to be doing everything we can to stand in solidarity with the people of Ukraine and defence of their country. Um, these commitments make us the largest non-NATO contributor to this effort, and I think that's really important. We're standing with the people of Ukraine in the fight for democracy here and their fight for sovereignty. Um, these commitments are an important step. They came at the request of the President of Ukraine, who, as you mentioned, Prime Minister Albanese has recently met with. Um, and overwhelmingly, when I'm talking to South Australians, they're very supportive of Australia's efforts, um, the ones under the previous government and, of course, what we're continuing uh, now to, in terms of how we're showing our support for the people of Ukraine. Yeah, we're certainly not alone. Why don't we step back a little bit further on the Prime Minister's journey because, uh, Marielle, he will be returning to Australia, which takes a while from where he is, but he, he will be soon. Why don't we go back to Paris uh, late Friday over the weekend He's done his absolute best, the Prime Minister, to, to do a reset with Emmanuel Macron and the French government. How are we going to measure the success of that? It's one thing for leaders to stand up in a palace and agree that bygones are bygones, but what do we expect to come from strengthened Australian French relations? Well, Greg, our relationship with France has been a really strong and really important one and a really enduring one as well. Our relationship with France has been forged during world wars in defence of liberty and in defence of democracy. Um, we've seen over the past few years of the Morrison government that relationship really take a hit. And the hit was really at the leaders' level in terms of the way the AUKUS announcement was managed and handled. Um, I was really heartened to see the warm welcome Prime Minister Albanese received from President Macron in France. I think it shows a resetting of that relationship. And I think that's important, uh, not just in terms of our national security and our relationships with Europe and our economic partnerships, but also in terms of how we can go forward with our partners on the world stage on the big issues that matter to our planet, issues like climate change, um, and also how we can make sure that we continue to strengthen and improve that relationship which has endured over so many years between our two nations. But do we expect, Mario, a quid pro quo in these things, you know, if there were a French bidder for some future piece of military capability that wasn't a submarine? Might we be expected to look more favourably on that? How do you practically express these restored relations? Well, Greg, I think it starts in terms of the relationship between leaders and resetting those diplomatic channels and those opportunities to have that engagement and to have that relationship restored to the level it was before. Um, now, I'm obviously uh, not a negotiator for the Department of Foreign sure. Affairs and Trade, so I can't go into detail on, on that part of your question. But it is heartening to see after the damage done under the Morrison government to this relationship, that warm embrace of Australia again. And I think that will be widely welcomed by people who understand the value and importance of that relationship. Are you among those, Perrin? Do you welcome this reset? I mean, I suppose we should note on the way through that it did follow an $830 million settlement of the whole French submarine brouhaha. But is it onwards and upwards from here? Oh. I mean, I just think we need to put things in perspective. Um, this was a reset, to use the media terminology, um, of our relationships with France because of a cancelled submarine deal. Now, this was a cancelled deal that Labor supported as we moved into AUKUS, and it was a cancelled deal from which France got a significant compensation payment. So. Um, I do agree with uh, Marielle that our relationship with France goes way beyond 
just the posturing of whatever leader is in place on the day. And I don't think that our relations with France would have been on ice for too long, regardless of who had won the election, because it is far deeper, far more enduring and far more significant than just one cancelled contract. Right. Well, there's one hypothetical we, we won't really get to explore. I know Malcolm Turnbull holds a view about whether that would have been possible or not to reset under Scott Morrison. But let's not go there. It is that time of year, and I'm going to ask you a completely non-political question for both of you, that time of year where we all get absorbed in Wimbledon and sporting events in the Northern Hemisphere. So as proud Australians, Nick Kyrgios's uh, conduct in the Wimbledon tournament, successful though he's been so far, Marielle, uh, has been uh, decried by Pat Cash as, you know, approaching circus-type behaviour. Do you, do you despair? What's your own view on uh, the conduct of this champion who is going very well and may well find himself going further in that tournament? Um, Greg, it would be deeply disingenuous of me to pretend I was an avid watcher of tennis on this program. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm not, not following Wimbledon closely, but I know many Australians are. Um, and look, I have followed a lot of the commentary around Nick Curious over the past few weeks, a lot of which I've found to be you know, a bit unfair and a bit overheated as well. Mm. I think most Australians just wish him every success on the court. They want to see him succeed at Wimbledon. But to be completely honest, it's normally the wiggles on my TV and not the tennis. So um, it's probably the end of my expertise that I can offer there. I take the point and I appreciate the honesty. But <laughs> Perrin, you know, we are proud Australians and support our champions but do you see lines being crossed just on the basic principle of sportsmanship, I suppose? Look, there is no denying he is a great tennis player. He's high octane, octane high entertainment. Uh, he's great to watch um, from an energy perspective, but you could say he is a fantastic sports player, but not necessarily um, a great sportsman, if you like. He's not necessarily good sport. Um, some of his behaviours, the way he talks to umpires, the way he talks to the, even the ball boys and girls um, who, are, who are there, you know, in an exciting capacity to help the game, uh, and some of the ways he talks about and to his opponents, it's not the sort of sportsmanship that I would like my children to emulate. emulate. His greatness, his capacity, absolutely, but the... Um, sportsmanship side of his playing, uh, I don't want to see that. Uh, I don't encourage people to repeat that. Well, there might be a few Australians who agree with that. Let's see how opinion falls, though, as they track his success or otherwise through this tournament, if not the years beyond. We're going to wrap up and leave it there. Thanks to both of you, especially for venturing outside the bounds of, uh, of partisan <laughs> politics. Really appreciate that, Marielle Smith and Perrin Davey. Uh, we'll talk to you again, both of you, soon. Thanks, Greg. Thank you.